Hey everyone, Jason here at Engineer Essentials. Today we're going to be talking about datum reference frames. Datum reference frames are especially important to GDT because they set up a framework that all other features and their geometric controls can reference from. Without this framework, our tolerance zones would lose all meaning. The framework we reference from will have to lock down all the degrees of freedom that are necessary for the given part. Generally, this means all six degrees of freedom will need to be controlled. As a refresher, I brought in the slide that shows all six degrees of freedom that are in a coordinate system. As you can see, there are three translations, X, Y, and Z, and three rotations, U, V, and W. It should be noted that X and U will always be associated together, as will Y to V and Z to W. For this video, we'll focus on the datum reference frame that is being constructed for the position callout here. These are datum feature references. The order of these references are important to note because it will dictate which features will take precedence while locking down the datum reference frame. Let's start with datum feature A. The surface here is being controlled by flatness. It is also indicated by this symbol that is datum feature A. And since we know by the datum reference symbol placement that this is referencing a surface, we know the datum is going to be planar. Remember the datum is a theoretically perfect plane that is derived from the imperfect tangible surface of the part. As a refresher, we know that planes can lock down two translations and two rotations. Next, we have datum feature B listed in the feature control frame. That is controlled with a perpendicularity back to datum A. And again, noting the placement of the datum feature symbol, we know that the datum feature is this surface here, resulting in another planar datum. While datum A was planar and able to lock down one translation and two rotations, datum B will only be able to lock down the degrees of freedom that A has not already locked down. So that leaves us with one translation and only one rotation, since the other rotation that it could have locked down was already locked down by A. This will be very important later on when considering tolerance zones of any geometric controls that reference this datum reference frame. Lastly, we have datum feature C, which is also controlled with perpendicularity. However, this time it is controlled in reference to datum A primarily and B secondarily. Once again, this results in a planar datum. But since we have already locked down two translations and three rotations with datum A and datum B, we know that the remaining degree of freedom that we can lock down is just one more translation. This animation will show the degrees of freedom slowly being locked down. First, datum A locks in three degrees of freedom, leaving three degrees of freedom still open. The datum B will lock down two more degrees of freedom, leaving one degree of freedom still open. Finally, datum C locks down the final translation that we were missing. Now, if you can take one thing away from this video, I want you to remember that lower precedent datums only control the degrees of freedom that are not already controlled by higher precedent datums. For this feature control frame, A precedes B, while A and B both precede C, respectively. This datum reference frame locks down all six degrees of freedom using three mutually orthogonal planar datum features. This is what we refer to as the 3 2 1 rule. To explain this further, consider the imperfect part we show here being set up for inspection. Engaging planar datum feature A needs three points of contact on the datum simulator to establish the datum. Then, when datum B is introduced, the next two points of contact from datum feature B will engage with datum simulator B. This locks in one degree of translation and one degree of rotation. And finally, datum C requires just one point of contact to lock down the final translation. Now, this example of establishing a datum reference frame only uses planar datum features established from surfaces. But what if we have a cylindrical part that requires the use of features of size? Let's walk through this example together like we did the previous one. For example, let's focus on the datum reference frame being referenced in the feature control frame here. It should be noted here that you can use whatever letters of the alphabet you want for your datum references. They don't have to be in alphabetical order, but they should, and I will emphasize they should mimic the assembly requirements of the part. That's the entire goal of datum reference frames and really gd &T as a whole. We want to mimic assembly requirements and functionality of the part. This ensures the features of the part meet the functionality of the part as a whole. On this new part, datum feature A once again is a plane being controlled by flatness. One translation and two rotations are locked down. Datum B is this boss here. 
The way that the datum reference symbol is placed indicates that this is a feature of size. What this means is the datum feature is the imperfect tangible surface of that boss, but the datum is the theoretically perfect axis of that cylinder, shown here as the bluish purple axis. We know that a cylinder can potentially lock down two translations and two rotations, but since A was the preceding datum, all that is left for the cylinder to lock down is two translations. As I mentioned before, if there are no features on this part that require timing, we could stop here. However, this part has a keyway that is basically located in respect to the bolt hole pattern. In order to make sure the bolt hole pattern on the part times up with this keyway, we will need to lock down that final degree of rotation. That's where datum C comes in. Using the width of the keyway as a feature of size, we can put the datum feature symbol on it and lock its midplane down as datum C. Datum C is a theoretically perfect plane. See here how datum A locks in the first three degrees of freedom. Then B locks in two translations. And datum C locks in the final rotational degree of freedom, thus fully constraining the datum reference frame. Watch as our part connects with its mating part in the full assembly. Notice the plane that is datum feature A engages first, regardless of the orientation of the boss, that is datum feature B. As a good brain exercise, what happens if we change up the design of this part a little bit? Notice here I've swapped around the datums. Datum feature A is now the cylinder. That means datum A will lock down four degrees of freedom. Two translations, two rotations. Next, datum feature B is the plane. It will only lock down one degree of freedom, a single translation. And lastly, datum C will once again lock in that last rotational degree of freedom to help us time other features. While this may seem insignificant, it completely changes the intent of the part. Now see how our part assembles and notice that we are declaring the boss as datum feature A and it is going to lock down the orientation of the part regardless of the plane's orientation. Then the plane as datum feature B will only lock down one translation. Watch this animation as the part gets locked down for inspection. Notice how the chuck locks down on the boss and orientates the part based off of this feature. Then the part slides until the face, datum feature B, makes contact. If you're going to inspect the location of the bolt hole pattern, it would be with respect to the boss. This may or may not be okay depending on your design intent. I will leave you today with two things to remember. First, when designing a part, it is crucial that the datum reference frame mimics the part's functionality. And second, lower precedent datums only control degrees of freedom not already controlled by higher precedent datums. Be sure to visit the website, check out our additional free resources. Here you can test your knowledge with our print reading and GD&T quizzes. You can also download helpful wall charts and access articles written by our training experts.